Hello, welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I am Alana, back here with Jamie. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. I know you started the day with a migraine. How are you feeling? It's okay. It's just, it's low level manageable. So that's, yeah, it's, I, and I've said this before, but every time I am here with podcasting, talking, it makes mm. it better. Like I just feel better. Yeah. I think a true migraine, migraine, like my mom used to get, like she couldn't see light. She could not like yeah. light would, and sound would just put her mm. under Mine are very different, and I so yeah. I I don't know if it's a true migraine or not, but the light and talking and it mm. helps rather than Good. hinders. So anyway, yeah. I'm doing much better, but thank you. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, I remember yesterday I was feeling so sluggish, and I was almost like, mm. I wish today was a recording day because there is something to like. Sometimes you just you need the start time. You need that. To be fair, there, there probably is a tiny bit of fake it till you make it. <laughs> I need to act like I'm cheerful and coherent <laughs> until I start that's feeling a, cheerful and coherent. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. But I do think that I, there's that like for me, I, and I think for you too, this is life giving just being here and talking about scripture, talking with each other. It, it, I always come away feeling good or at the very Same. least way better. <laughs> <laughs> right. I am excited to dive into more of Proverbs 31. I do have a just for fun. So since I know you don't like getting put on the spot, I'll tell you That's the just okay. for fun. Then we'll read the verses and then you can <laughs> maybe oh, have time to thought. So the just for fun, and you'll know why as soon as I read the verse is what has a very special significance to you. So I'm not just saying what's your favorite color, but what's mm -hmm. a color that you find emotionally significant for some reason? or other. And I will read some of our verses while you're thinking about that. So from Proverbs 31, we're in the NIV. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies merchants with sashes. So obviously I brought in the color question because of the verse 22, where it says she is clothed in fine linen and purple. Yeah. So do you want me to answer the question? Do you have an answer? I do. I do. Yes. Okay. So I'm a child of the eighties. I was born in 1976. So around the time I was like a tween, like maybe 10, 11, early nineties, late eighties, early nineties, the color mauve was like oh, the okay. thing, right? So kind I don't of like know. dark purple-y. Is that, am I picturing the same? It's like, uh, salmon ish color oh, mauve okay. is like a pinkish salmon like uh -huh. maybe a little bit more purpley than salmon okay but it was the thing mauve was just the big color and my mom got it in her head that she wanted mauve to be like the center piece of our home now it was a uh -huh. big upgrade from the dark red carpet that oh, wow. had been like the 70s red carpet uh -huh. that had been in the house. But anyway, so anyway, yeah, that was all taken off the drapes that were these big drape, heavy drapes with big like red flowers. And mm -hmm. yeah, it was bad. It I'm sure at one point it was great, but she wanted okay. to get it all done. So the whole upstairs was carpeted from end to end in mauve. Mm -hmm. And I just remember her like, saying the word i remember her like she and my dad went to pick out the carpet to pick out like they they got curtains that matched they weren't mauve but they had mauve highlights but i just remembered <laughs> i had never heard that word or that color uh -huh. and she said it all the time she's like, i want mauve and we would go and she wanted to pick out these fake flowers that went on the mantle and uh -huh. we went to some place and she's i want them to have mauve flowers so there's something about that color. I don't love the color per se. Uh -huh. Like it, I, it associates, I associate Reminds it with my mom. mom and how you... much she loved it. And when I see the color, this is very strange, but when I see the color, I smell new carpet. Like, oh, funny. Like I remember when we got the, yeah. the carpets replaced, like that heavy new carpet smell. And 
So when I see the color mauve or when I hear it or see it, like I, Uh huh. You smell like, that. I could smell in my mind's <laughs> nose funny in your mind's <laughs> nose. instead of my mind's eye, my I mind's get it. nose. I smell, yeah, you see what I did there? D. Smell new carpet. So anyway, mauve, just hearing the word, I can almost hear her say it. So funny. Yeah. Was it shag carpet though? No, it okay. wasn't. Okay. So it you was guys like, were like ahead of the times. I, I guess the shag yeah. did have we were shag trendy. carpet at one point, but yeah, yeah, I think the red carpet, not even the red was shag. It was a little bit, the original red was not shag, but it was, huh. it was blood red. It was like, Ooh, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. But the mauve was not shag. It was like squishy, but not, it was, <laughs> uh -huh. it was not shaggy. So that was a good thing. Go mom. Now that you mentioned being a child of the eighties and your color association, it didn't change my color association, but it probably changed my, Oh, maybe that is where it came from. It's this teal, right? It's the teal that like my car's teal. I got this really cute sun hat. That's teal. I love that color. I think it's, it's a cute accent color. To me, it's, it's the boldest, riskiest color I would want to wear or drive <laughs> because I'm not a flashy person. And so for me being like, I have a teal hat. Like it's not just a beige visor. To me, that feels <laughs> playful. Yeah. But I'm picturing like all of those, like, can you picture that teal, teal cups? And it had that like spray effect and it was everywhere. It was like, it was teal and purple and it was in all the malls and it was like the Aquanet colors. Like, I think teal was around a lot. <laughs> the 90s I think, yeah I think teal is a mall color <laughs> yeah definitely so that's probably where it came from I'm just picturing like our kids generation they're going to be having this conversation in 20 years and be like yeah I always picture beige and it reminds me of my grandma do you know what I mean like earth tones <laughs> yep all righty. Let's go ahead and pray for our episode and we can dive into more of our discussion. All right. Let's do it. God, we just thank you for just for being present with us for your Holy Spirit today. We just pray that you would be with us during this conversation about Proverbs 31 and reveal anything that you want us to take away from it. We just, we praise you for being a loving father that you're not harsh with us, that you have no desire to see us put ourselves down or struggle in a way that would lead to death, but you bring repentance that leads to life. I just pray as we continue to go through this chapter that you would bring us to repentance that brings life. And at any point, if at any point we are straying to the other side and feeling despair, feeling shame or guilt, that you would just remove that in Jesus' name, that you would remind us that we're daughters of the King and that you love us exactly where we are, exactly who we are, and that you call us into life, not death. And we just thank you for that, God, that by the blood of Jesus, we have access to becoming made more and more into the image of Jesus. Help us to do that as we study these scriptures. Amen. Amen. I'm still thinking about colors when we talk about she makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. And I think this is almost convicting for me in the opposite the way that most of Proverbs 31 convicts me. A lot of Proverbs 31, and we've talked about this like every single episode, it feels like, why aren't you womanly enough, right? When you read it, this one's convicting for me because I think that there were definite periods in my life where I would look down at women who really got into interior design or really got into fashion. And I would be like, why are you so frivolous? Why do you care what things look like? And I think that God has given us a gift. And some of us are definitely are gifted more than others in this. There's a woman at our church who organizes all the potlucks and she decorates the fellowship hall and it looks so beautiful. And it's so much more than just utilitarian. And if I were in charge of it, I would be like, yep, here's the chairs, here's the tables, here's the food. 
but she truly makes it like an experience. And so there is something about adorning yourself or your home. And I think that we absolutely need to take it in moderation. If you are tens of thousands of dollars in debt, probably don't need to go buy those throw pillows. But I also feel like there are probably a lot of other Christian women like me who do feel a little high horsey about it without realizing like you picture God's instructions for making the temple and adornment was top priority. And so there is something to be said for kind of the womanly art of making your home look or feel nice within limits and reason. Yeah. No, I definitely have fallen into that trap. We talked last time about when you're young, these black and white Mm -hmm. issues that you realize over time. And I'm not talking about biblical truths. I'm talking about, yeah. And I think, but, but yeah, I remember being that way about Mm self-care and feeling like, so selfish. You don't need Mm self-care. Just that that's a selfish thing. And people that would want to go to the spa or want to get nails done and hair done and spa treatments and stuff. I used to not outwardly ever, but inwardly have this smug little, I don't need that. I'm not a, I'm not a girly girl. I don't need to do that Mm. stuff. Or I'm not frivolous with my time. All of my time goes to this and this. When It is absolutely important, and we touched on this last time, to just as it's important to take care of your household and make sure your house is in order before extending Mm. your hands of generosity to others, it's important to do that self-care to an extent, obviously, like you were saying, within reason, but it is not shameful to take care of yourself so that you can be your best for the people you're serving around exactly. you in your family. It's almost like taking it. There's serving the poor and the needy in the community. Then there's serving your family, which is even more core, but then there's mm-hmm. you as a woman. Mm-hmm. And if you're not sleeping, if you're not, if you're exhausted all the time, you're not going to be the same person as you are. If you have full sleep, if you're, if you feel bad about yourself, every person, mm-hmm. we say this every time we record, but every woman is unique. I don't have to have my nails done to feel good about myself. I will admit when my nails are done, like I I don't like personally going to the salon a whole lot because Mm -hmm. it it does, we're just not in a place where that's something that I feel is important enough, Mm -hmm. but I'll do my own nails sometimes, or when I do get a gift card or something, Mm -hmm. use it for doing that. I do feel really good, but Mm -hmm. some people when their nails aren't done, don't feel good about themselves. Who's to say that person doing that is any more frivolous than me getting a latte at the local coffee store because it makes me happy once in a while. Who is to say? So we need to stop the judging and the snarky inner monologue. And, And the thing is, I don't know that I even realized it, that I had that attitude toward people until until I realized it, but for a long time, (laughs) I think for a long time, I think I just held these, I think one really important thing is to just be examining ourselves and our attitudes toward other women who prioritize self-care or like decorating homes or whatever the thing is that you might not value yourself and let go of imposing that value. Now, it's not to say that someone who only cares about what they look like and doesn't care about how they treat people is, it's not that that that's a good thing, but what I'm just talking about, not judging someone else for what they do value, exactly. just because it's different from what you value or what makes you feel functional and at your mm-hmm. best to meet the world right. and to meet your family where they are yeah. at their biggest needs. And it goes in every single direction. It can go from, I read a lot of books to Christian women when I was in my twenties that kind of my takeaway was if you aren't dressing nicely, then you're a slob and you're not representing the kingdom of God well. And then there's my, or you can go to the opposite extreme of 
I'm going to look down my nose at anybody who spends any money on any apparel. I mean, really, again, whatever you do it for the glory of God, if you're going to wear the stretchy, soft, cozy sweatpants that have holes in the knees because it's comfortable and you want the freedom to get down on your knees to scrub toilets, do it for the glory of God. If you're going to be dressing up in something really nice and formal because you are representing your church or your husband or your ministry or your business at some like high elite social event, do it for the glory of God. And I think we need to be really careful. I think every one of us as women needs to be careful about not judging the motives of someone else, right? You and I could show up to church on a Sunday wearing the exact same outfit for totally different reasons, right? Maybe you're doing it because you want to present your best to God and you want to show your family that Sundays are special. And maybe I'm doing it because I want the people next to me like, oh, I wish I looked as good as she does. And whatever, or, and it could be the exact opposite. Maybe I'm dressing down because I truly do have no self-worth and maybe you're dressing down because you want to be get like dirty painting with the kids in children's church. Right. And so we can't look at someone's outward appearance and judge what's going on in their heart about it. Just like, I, I love what you said. Yeah. Maybe you don't go and spend money on manicures, but that doesn't mean that you should look down at the people who do, right? Because we all have, yeah, we all have things that make us happy. And if you've got the means, I think it is okay to spend some of the money that God has given you on something that makes you happy. Like my house plants make me happy. So I continue to buy soil for them. I continue to buy fertilizer for them. When I feel like maybe I'm getting a little overboard, I set myself a moratorium and I'll be like, no more houseplant buying. I'm not going to buy any new houseplants. So you put some parameters around it, but then you also know that like part of the gift of life that God has given us is the ability to enjoy small pleasures like this. And yes, somebody in a destitute situation would look at me buying soil for my house plants and feel like that is the absolute epitome of being frivolous. Yeah. Just like I might look at somebody who goes and does a tourist trip to the moon as what in the world are you wasting your money on doing that? Evangelism (laughs) to all the little green men up there. Got to evangelize the microbes or what? But again, (laughs) We can't judge what's going on in someone else's heart. Just, I don't want someone to judge me for spending money on a latte. I don't want to judge somebody for spending money on an expensive purse. Is there a time where buying an expensive purse wouldn't be the best choice? Yes, but that's between somebody else and God. And that has nothing to do with me. And so it does get tricky because I think as women, we do feel a little competitive with each other about some of this kind of stuff. So it's either I look better than her. And so I'm more, there's a segment of Christianity that feels like the more attractive a woman is by worldly standards, the better she is doing at presenting Christ to the world. And Mm -hmm. okay, so what about the other 95% of people who don't feel like they, they look like the whatever this month's beauty standard is, right? Does that mean you're not representing Christ the world? And really, we just need to stop comparing ourselves to each other and recognize like it is, it's an amazing gift. Like I look at this friend of mine who I talked about decorating the fellowship hall. That's a true gift. And she's using it for the glory of God. And there probably was a time when I was younger where I looked and would have been like, why are we doing centerpieces when we could just have paper plates and call it good? And that's not the right attitude either. Yeah. And so much of our view on things tends to be cultural too. A lot Mm -hmm. of it, for instance, I had a friend. So let's think back a generation ago when Mm -hmm. I would say the majority of people that went to church dressed up. 
because that was what was expected. It was expected to dress up for church, put on your quote Sunday best. And now I feel like we've swung almost the opposite way where in some churches, not all. I know there are some churches where there's still very much dress up for church, but a lot of got the, some Alaska in you, Jamie. I think okay, okay, because we <laughs> actually Alaska's were for casual. <laughs> Alaska was absolutely. We were voted the least fashionable <laughs> state <laughs> in the it. whole entire. Yeah, but some of yeah for us being Alaskans, it, even though I'm not technically anymore, but being Alaskans, it is functional most of the year you're dressing for function not and i'm sorry i can't wear heels on ice or snow it just doesn't work even if they (laughs) yeah and your cute little dress looks pretty dumb when you're wearing big old clunky snow boots (laughs) or leggings underneath to keep me from freezing so Uh yeah no it and some people still do there were alaskans that Mm -hmm. went to jobs every day where they had to dress up and just like anyone else but in general yeah we definitely Mm -hmm. dressed down but but I noticed that even here, going to some churches here where mm-hmm. people, because I wondered about that. Right. I know the LDS population here always dressed to the nines, always yeah. looking good. But the evangelical mm-hmm. Christian churches that we are going to typically are just like others where it's mm-hmm. kids wearing shirts and t- shorts and t-shirts yeah. and mm-hmm. most people not dressing up. All of that to say, that is a cultural thing. And I just feel when you do look at scripture, there are plenty of examples of adorning the temple with the gold and the Mm -hmm. beautiful things, like you said, making it ornamental. And here we see she is clothed in fine linen and purple. And that is maybe a segue into the next into the next verse in 23, where it says her husband is respected at the city gate, where it's, I don't know. I don't know the full context of this, but it almost reflects back because it's part of the same sentence. No, it's not, but that's okay. It's following same passage, that sentence, yeah. same passage, mm-hmm. where it goes back and it's almost like reflecting on, she makes coverings for her bed. She's clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. It's almost like dress for the job. You would yeah. not see a politician with a wife dressed in jeans and a t-shirt at a formal event. Some of it could be that she is dressing herself to present a formal or I don't know, a, to present some kind of He's representing representation. Yeah. Yes. Representing well for yeah. her husband. It's reflecting on him that she takes care of herself. That yeah. She's I don't know. That's I don't just know. Maybe I, I think I think there's something to be said for what you're saying. There absolutely is. However, I grew up with if you didn't, if you came downstairs on Sunday and you didn't look good enough, you got the whole lecture of you're representing this family. You have the family name. Don't embarrass the family. And, and that the, feels icky now. It does, and it's and that felt just like pretense. You know what yeah. I mean? So again, it's got to go back to the heart issue. It's got to mm. go back to like. When I was a pastor's wife, not that I left my pastor husband, my husband left the pastor, <laughs> just in case that it sounded weird. <laughs> when I was That's married to a pastor, <laughs> yeah, I felt a lot of compassion toward politician wives where they're in the news and this, and she wore so-and-so's design to this, or there was this whole thing where one of the first ladies was like slighted in the fashion world because none of the big name designers would work with her. And it just became this whole thing, like who cares? And that's the Alaskan in me coming out to you. It's exhausting. But- yeah. It it can be. And as a pastor's wife, you are like, you're representing the church, you're representing your husband and it's exhausting. And I really disliked that part of the position. And we worked really hard to not pass that down onto our kids Mm -hmm. because we wanted them to be comfortable in the jeans and the t-shirts because we're in Alaska and that's where kids wear but it caused some issues in the church. It was like, why aren't your kids? Why do they look like little rag muffins? Because we want them to enjoy coming to church. We don't want them to have that fear that I had growing up. I'm curling my hair and like, I hope mom thinks this looks good enough. And so again, it has to come back to whatever you do it for the glory of God. Don't do it for the appearances. If you're going to decorate your bedroom, 
do it for the right reasons. Do it because you want to create a cozy place. Do it because you want to create something beautiful. Don't do it so that, you know, your Instagram followers envy you <laughs> or that kind of thing. But we also need to be careful as people like I'm speaking for both you and me, Jamie, as people who don't get as into that. We need to be careful that we don't look at the person who's showing their beautiful bedroom on Instagram and, oh, she's so fake. She's so frivolous because we don't know what's in her heart. She might be fake and frivolous. She might be doing exactly what God has gifted her to do in making a beautiful home. So again, I think it's one of those things where what I don't want other people to judge me for what I do. And so I need to be gracious and try not to be judging others. And a lot of it comes down to insecurity. It comes down to... Yeah, I'm. It's easier to be like, I never wear makeup than to be like, oh, maybe that's, is that my excuse for not needing to feel like I'm putting an effort? Do you know what I'm saying? Like some people. Yeah. And again, it's, it, w- there's self righteous, false humility on one extreme, and there's vanity on the opposite extreme. And we all just need to always be constantly checking our hearts <laughs> and trying for that kind of middle ground of, Yeah. If you live in the type of culture and subculture where dressing up and looking nice is expected, then do that for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. If you work the kind of job where you know you're taken more seriously when you're wearing the makeup and you've got the hair done, do it for the glory of God. Don't look down on the woman who hates that kind of stuff. And if you're the woman who hates that kind of stuff, don't look down at the girly girls for being so frivolous because we get that from the rest of the world. Anyway, we don't need to be giving it to each other. Yeah, definitely. So as a, oh, go ahead. I want to hear what you have to say. I was just going to say one other kind of facet. Were you going to keep talking about that? Cause I'm going to shift gears with the linen and purple thing. Okay. So with the linen and purple, I feel like one of the commentaries mentioned that fine linen is also symbolic of purity. So thinking in the figurative sense, She's clothed in fine linen. She's clothed in purity. She's clothed in purple. That's a sign of royalty. I see that as purity of spirit, purity of heart, and also walking in our birthright as a daughter of the king. Mm -hmm. I love thinking of that. There's something so comforting to me about that imagery of all of the ways that I identify myself in my faith. I feel like the titled daughter of the king makes me feel so secure and just, I don't know. I love it because I feel like so many times I don't feel worthy. It's the, I, it's that deficit of what am I not doing right? But being a daughter of the king, it's, there's a worth that just comes with being the daughter of the king that's apart from anything I can do. And the word daughter, I'm not the creation of this distant, cold creator being that just right. left. But yeah, I'm his you're daughter. not like some random lady in waiting twice removed. Or even a servant. I'm his yeah. daughter. I just love it. It's so... I can't explain it. It's just, but that idea of wearing purple and just being royalty, then also just the purity of spirit and purity of motive, I think, which goes back to let's stop judging. Let's just be pure of motive. Let's welcome, especially women, as women interacting with other women in the church, in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Let's just be so much more gracious. Let's have pure motives. Let's want everyone to succeed instead of looking at other women as competition. And let's just be happy for the successes of the women around us and realize that in God's economy, there's enough goodness for all. Yeah. And beauty doesn't, and I'm not talking about like the physical beauty of a woman. I'm talking about like the creation of beauty, whether that's in how we're adorning a house or a church or how we're dressing ourselves or our kids, it's not taking away. There's not a set number of like beauty atoms in the universe. And so if you're adding, if you're sprinkling a couple extra beauty atoms onto your mantelpiece, it's not taking away from the beauty that I have to put in my home. Do you know what I mean? And I think that helps us remember this kind of thing too. And 
I think the world does and the church Sometimes we do really look down, like how frivolous is this? How many Instagram reels can you come across today making fun of women for buying throw pillows? That's a trope. That's a whole thing. And okay, no, I don't have throw pillows, but I can definitely appreciate a room that feels cozy because it's got that little pop of color. So again, whatever God has put on your heart, Do it for his glory. If he's given you the desire to make a beautiful flower garden so that people who pass by are going to have their spirits lifted up, do it for the glory of God. If you're decorating the church and you're making the bathroom look gorgeous because you know just what color of paper towel holder to match with what color of lotion holder, do it for the glory of God. And, and yeah, I think it's another just reminder. Let's celebrate that women can do this. We can make beautiful nurseries. We can make beautiful homes. We can make beautiful gardens. We can make beautiful churches. Not all of us are called to that. And not all of us have the gift to do that. And if we don't, we shouldn't be looking down at the people who do, because there is something again, go back to the old Testament and go back to the rules of the temple. There are so many things that were there just for the beautification of it. And have I ever told you about the man I play piano with? I don't play, he plays piano and I sing at church. He's really talented. And we talk some about like art and creativity. And so he was the first person to point out to me the very first time in the old Testament where we are told that the spirit of God was put on somebody is not for warriors or prophets. It's for the two craftsmen who made some of the tapestry and some of the art that belonged in, I forget if that was for the tabernacle. I think it started at the The tabernacle tabernacle, and then became part of the temple. That's beautiful. Yeah. And so it's okay. Cause I even asked him, cause you know, he does all the adornment and all the embellishments on the piano. And I told him like, Sometimes it feels, I think if I were in your shoes, I'd be like, is this too much? Am I overdoing it? Am I, and he was the one who, who brought that up, that there is a place for beauty's sake and beauty for the sake of bringing glory to God and no other reason. And I think Mm -hmm. that God has proven that to us in the natural world. Flowers didn't have to be beautiful. He could Mm -hmm. have created something else that would have attracted pollinators without it having to be aesthetically pleasing to humans. Or the galaxy didn't have to inspire the sense of awe and wonder that it does. And so sometimes he creates things like just for the sake of enjoying the creation, right? What is the purpose of a platypus, right? I think it's to show us that not everything needs to have a purpose. (laughs) Like sometimes it can just be fun like the little kid who's like making stuff out of play-doh you're not going to be like this isn't feeding anybody don't you know that there are hungry people and no the kid's having fun making his play-doh stuff I think that that. and maybe this can help people like you and me who maybe don't tap into that side of it more you probably play dress up as a little girl right don't do anything even remotely connected to that anymore Maybe it's time to be like, you know what? This doesn't have to be vanity. This doesn't have to be, ooh, look at me. This doesn't have to be, I'm going to spend thousands of dollars on one item of clothing. Maybe this is just, ooh, this is fun. You and I went to the mall once when we were in Anchorage together yes. and we tried on like little cool our tie-dye little prints. Like elephant, our yeah. little, my Sometimes elephant dress. dress. I still up love is it. It's just fun. Yes. It doesn't have to be loaded with all of this stuff that we load it with. Yeah. And looking at that first verse that we read, verse 22, she makes coverings for her bed. Now, I don't claim to know, again, the history were the homes that she, I'm guessing her home had more than one room and that it probably was a bedroom that was not privy to other people, even either way. But why would you make a covering for your bed other than for the enjoyment of yourself and your husband? Mm-hmm. You doing it for the glory of God and just for the people you love. And what that reminds me of is I tend to do stuff to make people happy, like people pleasing. And that includes doing things. And I I have had times in my life where this has been way over the top where I will do the things that other people expect. And my husband has said this before, okay, you do all this stuff for other people because they're expecting it while your family at home 
doesn't get that same kind of care and attention. Mm -hmm. So that is a reminder to me, always make sure that here's an illustration of that. That's really sad. Uh I would always go to great lengths when I was making like a meal for someone who was either in the Mm -hmm. hospital, like a family meal when you're on the meal meal train thing. I would do these great elaborate things. And so I just remember one time I made like a nice dinner for our family and our, one of the kids was like, who's that for? (laughs) Because I would, and I just was like, it's for us. Oh, like you made that just for us, not for anybody Uh else. (laughs) I'd usually make double for the other, Mm -hmm. but it Mm -hmm. was this realization of when was the last time I did something for the kids and my Mm -hmm. husband just for the sake of lavishing those things on them. Yeah. Yeah. I remember a similar story. I This is how casual Alaska is. If anybody listening doesn't quite believe me, I wore jeans instead of my usual like swishy pants one day. (laughs) And my son asked me, he was like probably early elementary age. He says, oh, are you and daddy going on a date? (laughs) So I was wearing jeans. Yeah, that's like me too. (laughs) That was me dressing up. But I think, again, if we want to tie it back into the world of fashion and the world of whatever you do for the glory of God, there is so much to be said for knowing your surroundings. Like I could, I'm I'm leading music at church these days. I don't wear jeans. I'd usually wear like black pants and a top that's not a hoodie. That's me dressing up. If we lived in another decade or if we lived in another state or if we worshiped with a different denomination where it was expected that if me showing up in just black pants and a blouse and often tennis shoes, like if that would be seen as disrespectful, then it would be on me to do something different. In the same way, like when I lived for a very short time, right when we got married in LA and I could go and wear the spaghetti strap tank top and it wasn't seen as immodest. I'm not going to wear that when I go up and lead worship now at my Alaska church where that's completely impractical for every time of year (laughs) because it's either too cold or there's too many mosquitoes. It's the way we dress is impacted by our culture and our society. There's something to be said for that too, right? Like how many of us are worried about whether somebody sees our ankles if we're wearing sandals, right? But a hundred years ago or at certain points, like that would have been a big thing. And so again, it just comes down to whatever you do. I hope people aren't sick of hearing it yet. (laughs) Do it for the glory of God. And I think a neat takeaway could be like, go back. Were you the little girl who played dress up? Go back, ask God, what's one thing that I can do just for the sake of making something beautiful? Maybe that's buying cut flowers when you go to the grocery store and putting them in a vase. Maybe that's, yeah, I'm going to put on lipstick so that I can eat my microwave dinner at home with my husband, whatever it is. Maybe it's, I'm going to go to Target and buy that throw pillow (laughs) that I Mm -hmm. wanted. Yeah. Ask yourself within the limitations of my budget and within the limitations of what is considered outlandish in my culture, what can I do just for the sake of making something look pretty and try it and see, and it might bring up weird stuff for you right? I know it definitely can bring in weird stuff for me. Like when you think about dress up, like not the play dress up, but if I had to, let's say that we moved to an entirely different state and there was a formal dinner for Scott's work or something like that, the act of finding a formal dress and putting it on and getting hair done and getting makeup done, that's going to bring out a lot of junky stuff in me because there, there is a lot of a baggage or even when you and I got our pictures taken, right? Yeah. And we got our hair done before that. And there was a little bit of baggage. There's like, is this too much? Is this mm-hmm. vanity? Is this a waste of time? Is this a waste of money? But we laughed so hard when we were doing that photo shoot. And we don't use those pictures for much. Like they were okay, but they're not like everywhere. So if nothing else, you and I spent, I don't know, maybe a total of a hundred bucks and had a really fun couple hours and laughed harder than I've laughed in a really long time. Yeah. No, and that it was, in itself yeah. is a good enough reason to go and do that. But wherever you fall on the spectrum of being like very girly, girly girl, or so not 
but there's baggage on all sides. There's pitfalls and extremes to avoid on all sides. And so we can just close with our prayers that you will, you'll find the balance of where God has called you to be that fits perfectly for the situation you are in. The wife of a U.S. senator is going to dress differently than a preschool teacher in Alaska. And that's fine. <laughs> so wherever it is that you are, I would just, yeah, my prayer is that God would give you the discernments to, to bring beauty to where you are. If you are the kind of person who loves beautifying the place you are, know that is a gift that can be used for the glory of God. And you shouldn't be made to feel like petty or frivolous about it. And if you aren't that type of person, what's one thing you could do to bring a little bit of fun or beauty into your wardrobe or your space? Let's close with, do you remember... When we made those Pinterest mood boards ever ago for praying yep. Christian women. Vividly. I <laughs> loved that experience. So basically what we did is we we hired a branding expert who was going to make like our logo and we didn't use anything of what they gave us. But the experience of talking about what do you want praying Christian women to look and feel like? was really cool. And the exercise she gave us was we needed to make like a secret Pinterest board that answered a couple questions. How are you going to dress for your ideal work day? What is your ideal workspace going to look like? And I think the other one was when somebody is done listening to your podcast, find pictures that represent how they feel. And that was a really interesting one. And I still do. That was the first time I had ever done a Pinterest mood board, but I still do them now. And I think that they can turn into springboards for prayer too. So you could even do a Pinterest prayer board. How do I want my family to feel? What do I want? What's a picture that represents the kind of marriage I want? What's a picture that represents the kind of friendships that I want? And then you can create those. So it's almost like a mood board and a vision board and a prayer list <laughs> all in one. And it can be a pretty powerful exercise. That was the first time where I even started to think about what would I wear on my ideal work day? I'm going to be wearing my hoodie like I always do. <laughs> like I'm wearing my hoodie and my athletic pants, but then you bring it deeper and it's what are the feelings? That, okay. So I want the feeling of comfort and coziness and inviting like that warm, inviting feeling. So how can we create a home or a wardrobe or a website that looks like that and represents that? It can be a cool exercise. Yeah, that is that was very cool exercise. And I just wrote down the note. That's such a good prayer tip is to just one mm -hmm. more creative way that yeah. you can just expand your prayer life in mm -hmm. a way that, that might be really effective for some personality yeah. types. Yeah, I love and it. And I think that a lot of people can understand using like a vision board for your prayers. But then mm -hmm. I think a mood board is different because it's less about what are the things you want, right? Like a vision board that is also your prayer list. To me, that feels a lot of, okay, what's the dream vacation? What's the dream home? What's the dream car? And this is more about what's the feel that you want. So what feeling do you want your home to bring to people? What feeling do you want your ministry to bring to people? What's the feeling of safety that you want your kids to feel. Do you know that Norman Rockwell painting of the parents looking over their children while they're sleeping? Mm -hmm. And if I remember right, like the dad's holding a newspaper that's talking about like World War II and stuff, but there's this sense of these children have no idea what's going on in the world. All they know is that they are safe and protected. And so sometimes finding the visual representations of that can be a prayerful experience. And looking at those pictures can fuel prayer. So for people who are creative minded, we'll give you some listener homework and that is to make a prayer mood board for your home or your family or your ministry, or at least one aspect of your life. And the questions are like, what do you want people to feel when they're in, let's say you're doing it for your home. Not the question isn't what do you want to have in your home? And the question isn't what do you want your home to look like? The question is what do you want people to feel? when they're there. And so you're, you could be very abstract and it could be like a picture of a cute little fish that smiles because it makes you happy and you want people to feel happy. Or it could be like very specific. I love this 
picture of this living room because it feels, it's got the vibe I'm looking for. But yeah, and you can use those to fuel your prayers. And I guess that's a good place for us to leave it at. All right. Anything else you wanted to add? No, that, that is perfect. I love it. Thanks everybody for joining us and we will talk to you next time.